So let's have a think about this. Can we remember back to yesterday? Seems like a long time ago now in terms of concepts. Do you remember? If we gave you a function that was the sum of a couple of things, or even the sum of a bunch of things, like three or four or five things, then to find the derivative of that whole function, you can just add up each of the individual derivatives. Do you remember that? Right? So if I've got, like, say, u and v, then your result will just be, I can write this in an abbreviated form, u dash, just differentiate that guy, and then add it to v dash, which is the derivative of the other guy, right? So the sum, sorry, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. That's what we, that's one of the things that we showed. We even went and did, did it with first principles, okay? Now, you guys know math is all about patterns, right? So one of the things that's, that would be nice is if this is true, you differentiate a sum, you get a sum. Does it stand to reason then that the derivative of a product, this is what happens when you multiply things, right? Would that, would that be the product of the derivatives? So what that might look like is something like this. Differentiate this guy, it's u dash. Differentiate this guy, it's v dash. And then would it be the case that you just multiply those two derivatives, right? Now, hopefully the fact that I am posing this question to you in this way should raise your alarm bells because this would be really lovely. But reality is often a little more complicated than we would like. And believe it or not, you have all the information, all the knowledge you need to prove that this is not true. So I'm going to rehearse it for you real quick, right? Let's think about a function that you know. Let's consider a function like, say, 5x. That's a function we've met. We've, this is simple enough. We know how to differentiate this, right? What's the derivative? It's just 5, right? That's the gradient function. This is just a straight line. The gradient's always 5, all the way along, okay? But 5x, we can also consider that as a product, as something multiplied by something else, right? Let's see what happens if we consider the derivative of each of those individual parts that are in the product. One of them is 5, and then the other one is x. 5 times x. Can someone tell me, what's the derivative of 5? It's 0. It's, yeah, nil, 0, zip. Then you've got this guy, the derivative of x. It doesn't matter. That's just, well, yeah, I will get an answer in a second, but it doesn't matter because the first thing out the front is 0. It does turn out to be 1. By the way, that's dx on dx, isn't it? Oh, of course it should be 1. It's a fraction, right? So what you get is this. Now, hopefully you can see this contradiction here, right? We know what the derivative is supposed to be. If you look at each of the components of the product and differentiate them individually, you do not get, I mean, you get something, but it's not that, it's not the real answer, okay? So it turns out this is not the case. The derivative of a product, sadly, is not the product of the derivatives. It's something a little more complicated. So I'm going to tell you right now, you might want to get your pen for this part, I'm going to tell you what the real product rule is. It's actually not that different, but it is a little more complex. I should say complicated. Complex means something else in maths. So here's the product rule, okay? If you are differentiating a product, some function times some other function. So if I write this, the derivative of one function, I'm just going to call it u, multiplied by some other function, I'm going to call it v. Instead of just simply the product of these two. You get this. Uh, I'm going to write it two ways. One way that looks a bit messy and then a way that's going to be a bit more neater and easier to remember. v du on dx plus u dv on dx. This is a bit more work to remember, isn't it? It is so much more messy than this. But sometimes reality is messy. There's a proof for this, but it's a little bit time consuming and you can see how quickly we've been running through things. So if, you're, if you'd like, I'm very happy to run through that proof with you, but the proof doesn't add too much to your use of this formula. You can still use it quite happily without it. Now I mentioned to you before, this is like a messy, gross way of writing it. There's a slightly more memorable and concise way of writing it. The derivative of u, using our notation up here, we can just write it as u with a dash, right? So instead of writing v times this long awkward derivative, instead of using Leibniz's notation, I'm just going to say v times u dash. And then how would you write this? It's a bit on the end. Start with a u. What's this thing? It's just, it's just v dash, right? So when I got taught this when I was in year 11, my maths teacher called this a vuv, because that's what it sounds like, right? Vuv, right? Say it again. 
What? I just hit the what? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose you could, because it's addition, you could reverse the direction. So if you prefer it, you could call it an uvu. But there are going to be reasons later on that I'm going to suggest, actually, despite the fact that they're both equivalent in this context, this is actually a better way to remember it in this order. OK? So can we quickly look at an example? Um, let's just look at this one first. Let's look at this example here. Right? That was the simple way. It doesn't work. So can we do it using this product rule? I'm going to say that the derivative of 5x is, and I'm going to encourage you to get another color out, and we're going to call one of the functions u and the other one v. Okay? Let's have a look. So, what's v in this case? That's x. And then the next thing along is u dash. There's u right there. You already know what u dash is, though. If u is 5, what's u dash? What happens when you differentiate it? Yeah, 0. That's what you told me over here. Right? So it's x times 0 plus. All right, now comes the second half. What's u? D. It's, look carefully, it's just the, the number 5. Right? And then what's v dash? Yeah, it's the derivative of x, which we already established is 1. So you're like, oh, it's 0 plus 5, which, as we established before, is 5. That's the actual result we had. Now for cases like this you'd be like, why would you go through such a long rule to do this? Well in cases like this you would not go through such a long rule, you'd just use this quicker rule that you already know. But we're going to start to get to more complicated things like for example, <clears throat> actually I shouldn't have rubbed that off because that was a perfect example, but anyway, if I ask you to differentiate something like this, x squared plus 1 to the 7 and then 5x squared minus x. Have a look at this guy, right? Now, even though this looks long and gross, number one, what will we do for this first part here? We have a rule for this. We don't need to expand it. What would we use? It's written up above on the board. Chain. Use the chain rule on this, right? You do the outside, 7, this to the 6, and then you do the inside. What's the inside? Uh, 2x. 2x, just there, right? So that's the chain rule part. But then when you do this, you're like, oh, gross. I'm going to multiply out by this whole thing. No, you don't. You would call this u, and you'd call this v. v. And then you'd go through v, u dash. In fact, let's just quickly do it. Um, it's equal to, here's v, u dash. Can we, can we do this guy? 7x seven seven x. X squared plus 1. Seven what happens to the 7? Good. There's the outside. Can I do the inside now? 2x. There's the v u dash. What's next? Have a look at my rule. Just u, right? Here's u, right here. x squared plus 1 to the 7. Multiplied by v dash. So here's v. So what's v dash? Can you read off what v dash should be? 10x comes from here. And then? Minus 1. So you guys are really getting the hang of it. Now, I know this looks awful and gross, but guess what? You did the whole thing. That's it. No expansion necessary. Um, and in fact, this form here is already sort of in, in the right sort of setup to do the next thing that you'll learn about a little later on. So even though it looks terrible, that's actually exactly where you want it to be. Okay.